welcome to Tiger Carpenter. Today uh, we are going to make the thickness planer sled. I spent quite a while searching for the best thickness planer sled on the internet and I found quite a few good ideas. However, I decided to slightly improve on these ideas and I came up with my own design to make your jigs last forever and outlast the weather elements it's good it's a good idea to to choose uh, plastic and aluminum as a material for your jigs so this is uh, why I have decided to go for the cast acrylic even though it's very flat and pretty stiff as you can see with some reasonable force I can still flex it I'm going to make it more stiff by using this aluminum uh, angle profile which is three millimeters thick I don't want this aluminum profile to stick out proud of the acrylic sheet because I want to use that flat surface as my reference for jointing we are going to route the edges of the of the acrylic sheet i'm using this bottom cleaning router bit okay let's lower the bit Here is the moment of truth. Okay, I'm going to run the second pass now. I removed the paper because it was jamming. Acrylic is beautiful. The edges are so crisp. There is no chipping, there is no damage whatsoever, even though we are bashing it with the router. And I tell you, man, this is really flush. It looks good. So now, now let's do the, yeah, it's flush. Is this the final moment of truth? Yes, we are flush now. I have safety glasses. Yeah, 75 centimeters. Let's drill the same holes in the second one. Combination square, I set it to six inches. Okay, now I will move the stop block six inches okay okay and repeat the same six inches Now 
now that we drill the holes in the aluminum profile and drill the holes in the acrylic. Okay, the exit of the drill is clean. I'm going to put the screw in here so it doesn't move. I have the screws. Let's put the screw. Okay, so we have the other side. We start from the middle hole again because I believe it will help us with the alignment. Now let's countersink the holes in the aluminum. Is it flush? Uh, and I'm going to make the jig for our thickness planer sled. This jig will allow me to to keep the fixed distance between the holes uh, as if in the PARF system, which is used in MFT. And then we will measure it accurately and we use this jig on the planer sled to mark the holes, which we will then drill on the drill press. I fixed the distance between the blade and the fence to six inches. Why six inches? Because the, the distance for the holes will be four inches. Okay, lock the fence. We have the six inches and then we will have the sides which will be sliding along the sled. I used the top of the jig to measure the distance from the fence to the blade, which is six inches. I'm going to cross cut the sides to match the top of the jig. Can it slide? That's successful. It's very snug, very tight. And still we can move the jig. So now I'm going to measure and do the spacing for the pilot holes. 72.3 millimeters from each side will give me exactly six inches in the middle for the two rows of holes which will be spaced six inches apart so let's measure now the 72.3 let's mark it with a pencil let's see if it matches and let me mark the lines with the knife Okay, so we have the base holes drilled. These two rows should be six inches apart. The holes are tight and will be used as a guide to drill the holes in our thickness planer sled. So now <coughs> I'm going to find the holes which will be spaced four inches and two inches from each other. So we'll have two rows. This way we will have support for the narrow stock, medium stock and wide stock. So let's find two inches apart now. Okay, so I scored the line 
it should be exactly two inches apart from the center of this hole. So now we want one inch from the edge. Done. And now I want four inches from each other. So I would rather measure from the first line than from the edge. So if we wanted to go from the edge, you can see the line will be slightly off. So once more, three inches plus one is four inches. So now from this hole to this hole, we should have four as well. Let's test it. Yes, perfect. One more time. Two inches and two inches. You can see we have many options. I really find these machinists, machinist blocks very useful, you know. When you, you, when you measure this way, you will be always off 0.2 mm, 0.3 mm, because it just doesn't do the job. This one is a metal block. When you position it precisely, it's guaranteed. I can feel that the bit registered on the cross of the scored lines. The remaining hole to be countersunk. Three plus one, we have four. And you can see how I move them. I push one then I can slide the other one. Okay, so now we are going to adjust the fence to the original position, which was used to drill these holes. And I will put the Forstner bit, which is 12 millimeters. And it allows me to bury the washer inside the material. So this, the washer diameter is 11.6 mm and the Forstner bit is 12 mm. The sink for the washer is very clean and no chipping at all, so it's, it will look very nice. Okay, let me show you in what weather conditions I work. It's raining cats and dogs. The sinks for the washers are complete. Now I'm going to squeeze it to make sure that it's tight. the washer and the nut. This one is done. You can feel it's flush and nice and beautiful. Well, it's not funny. Wow. It's tight. I can feel it's flush. As you can see, the assembly of my thickness planer sled is already proving the point of working in the tropical climate because I can assemble my sled in the rain and I'm not worried that it will distort or warp or change the dimensions because of humidity or rain. 
So that's the winner here. Washer, not it's a precision project, and because I will be using this tool as a reference <coughs> for flatness and straightness, I, I am putting extra effort to keep everything accurate it's slippery from the rain I'm very very happy I basically want to mark the holes for the drill press okay so I have the threaded insert which will go inside and inside this threaded insert there will be a set screw or grab screw so now i'm going to measure how deep the hole should be for this threaded insert because we don't want to drill the hole all the way through so it's 12 mm now we have 12.9 yeah now now we have the remaining middle row done final check it looks good let's check for the squareness it's two inches apart uh, these two holes four inches apart now these two six inches apart so how I started, I just put it against this jig. And apply very slight pressure and turn. And I try to feel whether it's already in the hole. It's sliding along the thicker part of the threading rod, not the shaft, so don't look at the shaft distance from the fence, it's just indication. We are actually registering the, the threading part against the fence. So when it's already biting, we can go faster. As you can see, I'm using the spiral bit, which allows the waste, the cut waste, to go upwards and leave the hole rather than clogging it. So this is very, very important when you are threading acrylic or soft metals to get the clean thread. I really cannot recommend more the spiral bit. I, I think I can start it by hand. It's going in very easily. So it's perfectly flush. Or set screws which have flat head, flat surface. There are different types, there are spiky ones, but they want the material to lay flat on the grab screw. 
<laughs> to be honest, I am very, very happy with how it all turned out. I had this idea in my head, but you know, there is always a long way from the ideas to implementation. Now I have finished all the threaded inserts. So the remaining task for today is putting the grab screws in. There is a hole here that allows the Allen key to turn it because we will be accessing the grab screws from the bottom and this is the bottom. I will put it from here and then I will turn it to the left to make it flush. Okay, it's done. Both of them are flush. So now that we know what we want to do, another one, the hole for the Allen key, we want to be up, which will be the accessible from the bottom of the sled. And this is the bottom. So now I'm putting the grab screw and now I can access it from the bottom of the sled to make it flush. I'm turning it to the left until it's flush on the other side. Great. So the remaining part I want to add the anti-vice or anti-vice which will allow me to hold the material in place. Okay, we are halfway to the hole. Okay, so now I'm going to punch the marks. Okay, so I'm using drill M6 to allow the bolt M6 to go into the threaded inserts. It wasn't easy, but hopefully it worked. Okay, let's countersink. Let's drive these bolts. Nice. And voila, there you have it. This is exactly what I had in mind. Rows of grab screws, which are adjustable from underneath. The thickness planer is very thin and rigid because I enforced it with the aluminum angle rails. Here we have the back anti-vice jaw, which is not used to push the material through the planer, which what some people mistakenly do. They put the stop block at the back, which is completely useless because the rollers pushing down on the material and the material is pulling the sled using the front stop block. So here we have the grab screws sticking out from the thickness planer sled and they are acting as a front stop block. There is a gap raising here. Okay, there we go. <coughs> here is our thickness planer sled. Uh, I already adjusted it. This is very flat. The jig has passed the test with the flying colors. And hope you like it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to 
Tiger Carpenter. Bye-bye.